Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. Tomorrow we may see the launch of Bepi Colombo on an Ariane 5 to Mercury. Well, to Mercury after a few flybys of Venus and a whole lot of other business so that I can actually reach Mercury orbit. Uh, Bepi Colombo has two probes, two orbital par portions. There is an MPO and also MIO, which is a different orbiter from Japan. And I didn't really see any model of it available on the forums, and so I decided to create my own in the hope of duplicating the mission somehow tomorrow during a live stream on Twitch. So this model isn't exactly perfect, it's a long way from perfect. Um, and in fact, I left certain parts that I thought could be covered by stock stuff uh, to the stock parts. Uh, for instance, these solar panels are just tweak-scaled solar panels, and uh, similarly, one of these here. Uh, so, let me just uh, show you how to put together the parts that I have and talk about each one. These are the ones that I made in Blender for this purpose. So, uh, there will be a link in the video description to get those parts, and you just have to search for Bepi. And, um, it depends on you what uh, root part you want. You could start with the Mercury Planetary Orbiter, which is one of the orbiters, or MEO, which is the Mercury Magnus Magnetospheric Orbiter, uh, nicknamed MEO. And so I'll go with that first. MEO uh, produces 90 watts and requires 30 watts. That should be fine. I think the 90 watts is actually at Mercury, or uh, I suppose uh, at MOHO if you want to send it there. Uh, in, incidentally, there, the configuration for uh, stock is basically identical to the configuration for realism overhaul in this case, except for stock, it uh, does not have the modular fuel tank. So you'll have a modular fuel tank to work with here. Uh, for stock, you will not. And uh, one thing I would recommend is just grabbing a stock thruster or a bunch of stock thrusters. Actually, uh, unfortunately, oh, no. Uh, I think you can put them there. All right, good. I um, was wondering about the hitbox on this, but that seems to be all right. So you can put an array of little nitrogen thrusters. It's got cold gas thrusters. So stick nitrogen and um, give yourself some nitrogen in here. You got plenty of, well, enough room, let's say. And that will get you to the wet mass of Mio. The dry mass is 255, the wet mass is supposed to be 285 actually, but that's close enough right there. So uh, actually if you put more thrusters on, you'll probably get closer still. And maybe what we want to do, oh, uh, if you push snap, you'll the um, hitbox will let you put it there instead. So what, what we'll do is we'll put those there and we'll just put a pair of them at the center. How about that? I don't know where they are. It's a little bit hard to find information about the exact configuration of these things sometimes. So I'm going to go with this configuration here. Uh, this texture that I put on there is actually from a photo. I just sort of, of course it was skewed on the photo, but I just uh, adapted it as best I could to the surface of this. Uh, this, unfortunately, I have not animated yet. So I wanted to get this done in time and I didn't have that much time on hand, so unfortunately the dish is not animated right now. So just gonna have to deal with that. But otherwise there it is. You can put other instruments. You'll note that some are sort of sticking out. It depends on what mods you have. Uh, a magnetometer boom might be good, but it's really big. Um, and probably you just want one of them. But it's certainly, I mean, it's a magnetospheric uh, orbiter, so you'll probably want something like a magnetometer. Anyway, and then the next bit you'll want is Mio's sun shield. It's got sort of a cradle thing going, and it looks like that. And in terms of orientation, the tall part of the sun shield is where the thinner part of the MPO goes. So this thinner part of the MPO is where the tall part of the sun shield is. And that is because we have the solar panel here. And of course, 
the taller part of the sun shield is facing the sun, which is where you want the solar panel. MPO only has one solar panel. It's here and it is tilted, annoyingly enough. But I didn't have time to do animations on this, so we're just going to use the stockish, stockish solar panels. And extend. It is up to you, and it is tilted like this. It is up to you whether you want to use this solar panel or some other solar panel. This one is from stock, uh, Venstock Revamp, and I added a configuration on that. So you'll need Venstock Revamp in order to use this one. Or you could just find another solar panel and tilt it like this. I just, um, yeah. Uh, what you will also need is an antenna. And the one that looks about right is probably this Communitron HD55. Though, if you have other mods, maybe you can find something else that looks similar. And what it's shaped as is, okay, not this way around, but sort of like that. And it needs to be tilted so it's not going to interfere with the sun shield. And actually, I think it's... I forget if it's on that side or this side. You'll have to look at some photos. I made this basically using photos as reference. So, And a lot of the images had somewhat contradictory information because some of them were just uh, artist um, conceptions beforehand. That looks about right to me. So it's a little bit tough to figure out exactly. Um, the actual photographs of it on top of an Ariane 5 or in the clean room or something like that, well, those all have all the parts shrouded, and it's really tough to see exactly what's going on. Um, actually, the, the Mercury Planetary Orbiter, uh, one side is a little bit extended to sort of extend out to the dish, whereas the other side is more like this model. So there's actually sort of a fairing thing going on there with the struts to the dish. Anyway, uh, basically that's the idea. I have no information about whether it has cold gas thrusters or not. You do have a very weak reaction wheel to work with here, and if you decide to put thrusters on, there is available volume. So there's that. But anyway, that's there. Uh, these uh, all have decouplers at the bottom. Mio has a decoupler at the bottom of it. The Sun Shield has a uh, decoupler on the bottom of it, and so does the Mercury Planetary Orbiter. And the last bit is um, the Mercury Transfer Module. This is the part with ion thrusters. I know you, you love the ion thrusters. And its bulky part is opposite to the bulky part of the MPO. So that's important to remember. You can see the thrusters here, and I suppose we should do a test burn with them. And uh, as far as decoupling order, you'll have to take a look at the mission profile. I'll do the mission during the live stream, and so I'll be taking a look at all the details there, and uh, possibly post a video after the launch. So yeah, ion thrusters, and uh, they said in an article, 581 kilograms of repellent. Now, they didn't say anything about other thrusters, and technically these uh, what you call it, um, ion thrusters are sufficient to maneuver the whole thing. In other words, they can be gimbaled to tilt things, and there are a lot of uh, missions that have used ion thrusters to actually do maneuvers, because, I mean, they're pretty precise as far as things go. But if all 581 kilograms are xenon gas, and the thrusters give a reasonable amount of ISP, let's take a look at the ISP here. 3,280, which is not unreasonable at all. Uh, the, the thrust is very unreasonable. It's um, 238 millinewtons, I believe. 0.238 newtons. And that's why you get a burn time of two years. Now, you have my permission to go into the configuration for this and just delete some of the zeros ahead of the decimal point so that your burn time is not two years. Um, go for it. Uh, but it gives you 6,000 meters per second, and if you're not using some way of having persistent thrust through time warp, which is complicated, you're going to need to up the thrust of this somehow. But I've left it realistic, so it is how it is. 
Okay, and then that is that. And then this does not have a decoupler, by the way. Um, and in general, I think having something with an engine in it and a decoupler is not the best thing, or it doesn't seem to work. I've configured these solar panels based on the stock solar panels. Uh, they're just uh, size 2x and give the right amount of electric charge. So they're basically as big as I could make them to fit on here with the correct look. And I want snap, I want 2x symmetry, and I want to tuck them in a bit, unfortunately. And then when they extend, they look like this. I put tweak scale on just in case. Now remember, uh, you might want to turn this actually, come to think of it. Maybe we should put them one at a time. I'm thinking about how the panel rotates. And I don't like it being like that. So what I'm going to do is going to put it on like this and line it up with the top there. And I'm going to put another one over here. Unfortunately, um, doing mirror symmetry doesn't keep the flap oriented the same way. But yeah, the important thing is, remember, this side is the side that faces the sun. And then everything else sort of makes sense after that. I want to tilt this up a little bit more so that it gets the sun properly. But you will have that part sticking out for a while. Let's see, retract these. The real thing has the solar panels on the surface there, so it is what it is. Anyway, it's it's what I could do. I'm I, I know it's not perfect, but it is what it is. And we have an Ariane rocket to put it on. Oh, we should have a little adapter. I had a little adapter. There's, uh, by way of a first attempt. Well, there's an Ariane 5 payload adapter. I don't know which mod that's from. And so I'm not going to launch it all the way to Mercury in this video. What I will do is do a basic sanity check to see that things work. I think that's fair. So basic does it work kind of thing. I think uh, the core is from real scale boosters here. And obviously it has configurations for realism overhaul uh, that I did not make. So they're floating around there. Uh, they're either part of realism overhaul already or somebody else made them. And there are actually multiple mods with Ariane 5 available. And the boosters are from KW Rocketry. They're not exactly like the Ariane 5 boosters I know. But uh, I like them. <laughs> I like them, so that's why I'm using them. Okay, so we are at Kuru, and we should check the time. Uh, that should be UTC. Um, updated version available, huh? Okay. Uh, but uh, anyway, October 20th in the wee hours of the morning is when the launch will happen. Therefore, uh, it's going to be a nighttime launch. The two probes as well as the MTM all have a command module, so they all have a probe core basically, and also consume a little bit of power. If well, I have some sort of Ariane 5 launch script in here. Let's see if it works. It didn't really leave much time for the Volcane to light, but okay. So, MEO, the Mercury Magnetospheric Orbiter, I always have problems with that, uh, will be in a higher orbit, uh, apoapsis 11,640 kilometers with a periapsis of 590 kilometers around Mercury, while the MPO is going to have 1,500 kilometers apoapsis and 480 kilometer periapsis. Uh, both are in, at an inclination of 90 degrees to have optimal scanning obviously and they would be inserting into orbit on December 5th 2025 so it's a long trip seven years it's gonna take a while the dry mass and this is true of the model as well dry mass of the probe altogether all parts is 2.7 tons my launch mass is less than the stated launch mass of the probes and 
That may be because I'm not including the adapter. I don't know what exactly they're including in that. But mine's is slightly less. I can't imagine we need more propellant uh, for the ion engines, so... There are a number of things that I just don't have any information on, like where the thrusters are, if there are additional thrusters. And also, when they rate the power, sometimes it's not clear whether they're rating the power at Mercury or at Earth. I assume in a lot of cases it's actually at Mercury. You can't uh, run the ion engines at full power at Earth, uh, but you can at Mercury or MoHo, for that matter. Technically speaking, the ion engines, there are four of them there, but they're only run two at a time. You can't run all four, and they're, uh, so their rated thrust and rated power consumption are only for two. But while we, uh, with this probe, we are going to be just lighting all four, for simplicity's sake. And so four of them here have the thrust of two of them in real life. So it looks like um, the Vulcane stage is going to run out just shy of orbit, and then of course the upper stage is going to complete orbit. That's what you would expect to ensure the core's deorbiting. The first event uh, for it is actually an Earth flyby, and that's one and a half years after launch in 2020. It's in a funny skewed orbit after it leaves Earth SOI for the first time. They've got a little animation on Wikipedia, hopefully that'll help. That was a heck of a delay on the ignition of this, but okay, at least it's looking good. So, it actually does not have enough Delta V to send us directly to Venus, which I suppose has to be correct. I mean, if this stage had enough Delta V to send us directly to Venus, it wouldn't need an Earth flyby an, a year and a half after launch. So, checks out so far. Uh, now, if you're going to recreate this mission, it's going to be quite interesting to get that Earth flyby a year and a half after launch. And uh, maybe we'll try and plot that right now, uh, just as an experiment. So, April 6, 2020, Earth flyby. And then six months after that will be the first Venus flyby. And then about ten months after that is the second Venus flyby. And then it starts flying by Mercury after that. And it takes six Mercury flybys in order to uh, slow down enough. And then finally, seventh time is the charm with the Mercury orbit insertion in 2025. So given the seven year trip we're talking about, I guess it's not too surprising that the burn time on the ion stage is two years. Oh, incidentally, if you are using this particular transfer module with the ion engines in stock, it's acting like uh, four ion engines, four stock ion engines with eight kilonewtons of power. Total burn time, I think, in stock is like 22 minutes. So if you're trying to do this in stock and trying to get to Moho, uh, that is a lot easier. <laughs> that, that, that'll be a breeze by comparison. Downside, I didn't leave any room in the probes for mod propellant, so you're going to have to do everything with the bottom module. Okay, uh, 357 by 160 is where it put us. It's a little bit hard to figure out exactly where to do the burn, considering our orbit needs to be uh, inside the orbit of Earth here, and then outside the orbit of of Earth here, such that when we get there for the second time, we will fly by Earth. That's how it's supposed to work. And basically we're in an Earth-like orbit otherwise, so it's more or less a radial burn. So there we use all of the stage, let's say, and all we can do is shift around the location of our burn. 
Now that doesn't look like it's going to encounter at that end again. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there are also ion engine adjustments that lead it to encounter Earth. I'm not sure. Okay, well, let's just run through it. So we'll go on escape with this node. And we'll make sure all of our actual systems up here work. Well, that's all right. We can ignite. No ignition. Well, okay. So there goes that idea. So yes, it will have to continuously burn. Either that or we're going to have to add another ignition to this. I guess we can't shut it down. So I don't know if it's only supposed to have one ignition, but this is the case in Realism Overhaul right now. So anyway, let's just check that our ion engine is still fine. Okay, decoupling went safely. We see an ion engine plume. Well, four ion engine plumes. I don't know if they look like they're placed right. Do they look like they're placed right? Well, those little thrusters look like the... I mean, those particles look like they're placed right, but... This, these other particles look like they're in between, so I'm not clear. It's curious. They're pushing us away. Okay, well, we should extend solar panels. Ooh, that was quite an effect. Well, I don't have persistent thrust on them right now, so... While we're time warping, it's not going to work. Very slowly turning towards the maneuver node, but at least that works. And we do read an actual acceleration, so in theory, they are operating. Okay, just so that you know how to up the thrust, because you might want to do that on this MTM, I'll show you um, in-game data in EDB mods in the Bebby Colombo MTM folder. You will want to go to the RO configuration, and the regular configuration for stock will have plenty of thrust. So let's take a look at this RO configuration here. And what we see is this max thrust uh, 0 0.000290. Just take out some zeros like those three. And you will probably be all right. That'll increase the thrust level by a factor of a thousand. And maybe you'll have a stage time of a day. No, I mean, uh, you, you can up it, up it even more than that if you'd like, but uh, basically that's what you're looking at in this at modules, module engines section. That's what you want. If you don't like the plume, by the way, there's a way of changing that as well down here. Uh, you can select the plume of your choice, but that's more complicated. All right, let me just verify that the coupling things works. So thrust throttle down. Um, let's say uh, we want to get rid of this Mercury transfer module. Uh, no, let's let's decouple Mio first. It's probably the because uh, that has to stay in a high orbit. That's probably well we'll decouple first. So mm -hmm. off it goes from its sun shield. Um, do we see electric power? Well, it's pointing at the sun. Hmm. Still, it should have some electric power generation. Again, it has a very weak reaction wheel. Interesting. I thought I had put some electric power generation on this. We'll have to check up on that. You could just cover the sides of it with actual solar panels, and that'll do. I think I missed a transform name on it. So yeah, I recommend just putting solar panels on the side of it to get solar panels there. Mm. Okay, well there's something up with the thrusters as well, because they're not firing right now. Hmm. Interesting. We do have the reaction wheel as a backup, but wondering why the thrusters aren't firing. It is a service module tank. And we have nitrogen, and I, th I thought they were configured to nitrogen. Hmm. Well, if somebody can figure that one out, tell me so that I can fix it. That's the spent stage. Okay, so we can get rid of the shield if you don't want that 
sticking around there. It does not have a controller though, so please dispose of it in a better location. And then we have this, the bus and the MPO. Could extend the MPO's antennae, antenna, and release. And then it would be deployed. It has its uh, own mini reaction wheel, a weak reaction wheel. It also has some experiments built in. So seismic, pressure, gravity, and temperature are present and available. So you can activate those and use them for science. And it also has the displays in vacuum. Okay, well, this is what I've got for you. And maybe you'll have fun with it uh, with the Bepi Colombo launch coming up. With this, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.